In 2014, a research team from Trinity College Dublin examined the good and the bad things for your health in the Tala area. This has become known as the HANA project. It was an update to a piece of research that was done in 2001 in the same area of the city. The survey was conducted across 13 neighbourhoods within Tala. We had a very good response rate to this research with a whopping 82% of the people that we contacted opening their doors and completing the survey with us. This meant that we were able to collect information on over a thousand people from 343 households in the Tala area. Just over 50% of the households included have lived in Tala for over 20 years. This shows that the community is quite settled. Between 2001 when we first did this research and 2014 when we updated, there was lots of changes. For example, there was a doubling of the number of individuals who are living in houses where just one or two people reside. There was a 17% increase in the age of the population who are aged over 50 or above. Nearly a third of household members reside in government supported accommodation and this was an increase of 6% since 2001. There were 13% fewer people in full or part-time employment in 2014 compared with the earlier research. We asked the head of each household a whole range of questions. We covered topics such as lifestyle issues, for instance smoking and physical activity, how they would rate their own general health and whether there was anyone in the house whom had a chronic illness or a disability. We were also interested in the head of the household's opinion on different services in the community, such as the local hospital or GP services, and also their views on amenities such as leisure and playtime facilities. Of the survey questions that we asked, two questions became particularly interesting. The first question was, what are the top three good things about living in Tala? and people told us that amenities were very good, such as the square shopping centre, the civic theatre, community centres, churches, services targeting women, parks and leisure facilities like horse riding for young people. The second top good thing about living in Tala was community spirit and neighbours. And finally, public transport, such as the Lewis. The second interesting question was, what are the top three bad things about living in Tala? The responses to this question included a lack of amenities, particularly activities for younger people, reports of antisocial behaviour such as joyriding, gangs and litter, and also crime was mentioned such as thefts and burglaries. General health and wellbeing was another area that we explored in this research. We found that 44% of households had a smoker living there. This was a dramatic decrease of 25% from 2001 and a positive finding for all members of the house that share their living space with a smoker. Unfortunately though, there was an increase in people reporting stress. Over two thirds of people reported experiencing stress in the last 12 months. The number of households which contained one or more people who were in receipt of a disability allowance doubled to nearly 20% of all households. The most common self-reported chronic illnesses were heart disease, diabetes and respiratory disease like asthma. We also found very low levels of physical activity, with most people not meeting the recommended daily guidelines for activity. In fact, only one third of the population of Tala that we surveyed were meeting the basic government guidelines of 30 minutes or more of moderate physical activity such as quick walk on five or more times per week. A number of questions in the survey were used to investigate public opinion on Tala Hospital services. Nearly a quarter of household members had used Tala Hospital in the previous 12 months, and most were referred into the hospital by their GP. Approximately three quarters were satisfied with the care that they had received. Of those that were dissatisfied, the main reasons for this were waiting times and the speed of care being too slow. The vast majority of the people that we surveyed believed that Tala Hospital is beneficial to the surrounding area. In particular, they liked how close a major hospital is to their homes. It's becoming more common for patients and citizens to be involved in decision making with planning and running health. Almost half of the people that we surveyed would like to be involved in decisions about the hospital. Around 10% of those surveyed indicated that there was a person in the household who was on a waiting list for treatment within the hospital. Just over half were satisfied with the care that they'd received in the emergency department within the hospital. HANA research has shown us that many people in Tala have a very good, close relationship with their general practitioner. 
Responses to questions about local GP services showed us a number of things. In general, people were happy with their GP and would recommend their GP to a friend or a family member. In fact, over half of primary carers would prefer to have a blood test, an X-ray or an ultrasound with their GP rather than go into the hospital. Approximately three quarters of the households were within walking distance of their GP. It was estimated that roughly half of the households were satisfied with the current out-of-hours doctor services. Some households visited the GP quite often. In fact, almost all households that included a person with a chronic illness visited the GP once a month. However, not all areas within Tala have a GP. Vetter Kern is an area that is highly deprived and therefore most likely to have people living there that are sick. At the time of the study, there was no GP working in the Vetter Kern area. This was also the case back in 2001 and there's been no change since. The HANA project covered a wide range of topics that are important to people living and working in Tala, as well as those planning services in the area such as South Dublin County Council and the HSE. Stemming from the HANA project, we made a number of recommendations. For example, we know that some people are not active enough, so there's a need to develop, put in place and evaluate ways to encourage physical activity in the area. We should focus on preventing chronic diseases such as heart disease, diabetes and also breathing problems. Similarly, there's a need to develop, put in place and evaluate interventions to reduce the mental and physical effects of chronic stress. The length of time patients have to wait for treatment in Tala Hospital should also be made shorter. We should put in place a process to recruit more GPs to work in Tala to make sure that there are enough GPs to provide care to the residents, especially in the Fetter Kern area. Longer opening hours for traditional GP practices and further developing the existing out of hours services are a priority. Fortunately, this work has already started. The feasibility and cost effectiveness of x-rays, blood tests and ultrasound services in GPs should be assessed. There needs to be more encouragement and support for community involvement and decision making for developing and improving telehospital itself. At times, there can be a lot of focus on the negative aspects of tele. The positive aspects of Tala, of which there are many, need to be focused on and emphasised to be more balanced and truthful about what the community of Tala is like. Since doing the HANA research, we have set up a committee to help these recommendations become a reality, and we are very busy at the moment trying to implement them. The HANA project was conducted by a research team from Trinity College Dublin. It was jointly funded by the Adelaide Health Foundation and Tala Hospital. A number of organisations gave very generously of their time, expertise and knowledge to make the project happen. I am Dr Catherine Darker and I was the lead researcher for the HANA project. If you would like to learn more about this research, then the full details are available by clicking on this link.